brilliant hearts who to your glory came. Through dust of conflict and through battle flame, tranquil you lie, your nightly virtue proved, your memory hallowed in the land you loved. Long years ago, as earth lay dark and still, rose a black cry upon a lonely hill, while in the frenzy of a human play, Christ our Redeemer went on Calvary's way. Still stands his cross from that dread hour to this, judging and healing warfare's dark abyss. Still through the red the victor's pitying eyes look down to bless our fallen cavalries. These were his servants in his steps they crawled, following through death the slaughtered son of God. The Everybody, thank you for joining us for this morning's service. The restrictions imposed on us by the pandemic means that we cannot all come together physically as we normally would, but instead we gather online to pay our tribute to the fine sons of Bradford who made up the Bradford Pals. Today marks the passing of 104 years since the shrill whistle blew along the trenches in the Somme urging hordes of young men over the top and into a hail of bullets and shells from enemy lines. Many pals had been born or grew up as the old century drew to a close. These men were youthful, idealistic, filled with hope and passion, which was common among the young. They had volunteered to save their king and country and to call them flowers of youth is no exaggeration. They came from all walks of life and all backgrounds and had enlisted in a wave of patriotic fever after Lord Kitchener sent out his call for recruits. The government quickly realised that local ties could be harnessed for national gain and that the men were more likely to join up if they could serve alongside friends, relatives and workmates. And so the PALS battalions began to be formed. The Lord Mayor of Bradford raised the Bradford Pals Battalion in September 1914. The young soldiers were sons of our city. They played as children on these streets and in these fields. They'd worked and loved here. They'd breathed this air. They left cheerily and behind them remained proud parents and family. Although nagging doubts and gnawing apprehensions were probably never far from the thoughts of those at home. But what awaited these men as the 1st of July 1916 dawned, even today makes your blood run cold. The Pals Battalion right across the British front were optimistic. 
despite the German lines having been carefully laid out for several months. For a whole week, they'd been subject to relentless, relentless British artillery bombardment. And as the troops climbed their scaling ladders at 7.30 on that summer morning, hopes were I that little could have survived such an onslaught. But there was no quick breakthrough. Instead, a war of attrition began and heavy, barrage, and heavy barrages prevented much, if any, headway being made. The 1st of July 1916 was to earn notoriety as the bloodiest day in British military history. Overall, British casualties on that day numbered 57,000 of which 19,240 were killed. Today, we turn our thoughts to those young men lost from our district. And it is only the loss of life, it is not only the loss of life we remember, but the loss of promise they represented. We remember all that they could have gone on to achieve in science, in industry, in the arts. We remember so many hearts broken amongst those they loved and the awful toll it took. Hiding behind those horrific death figures are thousands more families who were plunged into grief, children left fatherless, wives widowed, mothers and fathers bereft. So many people affected by these tragic events. The dreaded knock on the door, the arrival of the telegram, and the very thought of which must have caused a shudder to run through so many Bradford households. We remember today that lost generation. We remember the hole ripped in the lives of so many and in the very fabric of this community. We will always remember them with gratitude and with pride. We remember the price they paid so that we could enjoy liberty and freedom. Their sacrifice must and will live on in us all. Good morning everybody. It's my privilege to represent the Bradford World War I group this morning and it's an honour to follow the Lord Mayor's moving address. I'd like to pick up on some of the Lord Mayor's themes, especially those of family and the importance of remembrance. But to begin, a few words about how the PALs were formed. It was in early September 1914 that the Lord Mayor's predecessor, Alderman John Arnold, addressed an enthusiastic meeting in the Old Mechanics Institute. This began the process of creating a brand new Bradford Battalion. Councillors and the great and the good of Bradford pledged to fund the new battalion at a cost of £7,000 until it came under War Office control. The Mechanics Institute provided rooms to serve as the recruiting office. Bradford newspapers were soon full of advertisements describing the advantages of serving shoulder to shoulder with friends and colleagues in civil life. And they gave a pledge that recruits would be granted the opportunity to be grouped in squads and companies on the principle of congenial company. I'm not sure that congenial company was quite what Lord Kitchener had in mind for his new army, but these adverts, urging pals to register together at the mechanics, gave rise to the title by which we remember them today. And who were these volunteers? As the Lord Mayor described, they were men full of zeal and of patriotism, church and chapel goers, sportsmen, workmates, neighbours. 
Ralph Hudson's book about the Pals lists their names and occupations. They were tradesmen, clerks, craftsmen, journalists, policemen, engineers and professional men, the very backbone of Bradford's commercial life. Every one of them tells his own story, but as the Lord Mayor pointed out, these are also stories about families. Families not only gave up their sons to the war, but also made their own contribution to Bradford's war, office, war effort. One such family lived at 143 Legrams Lane. Tom and Hannah Cure had three children, an only son, Vincent, and two younger children, the sisters, Kathleen and Marguerite Cure. Tom Cure was a stuff warehouseman. As soon as the war began, Tom volunteered at weekends with the Red Cross. He accompanied convoys of wounded from Midland Station up to St Luke's and he also worked there as an orderly. Hannah was a full-time volunteer helping Belgian refugees and then serving teas at the Midland Station where there was a soldier's restroom and she became an official Red Cross VAD giving basic medical treatment to soldiers being taken from the station to St Luke's. Neither Hannah nor Tom were paid for any of this work, which only ended after most troops had been discharged in 1919. Vincent joined the Second Pals in 1915. His big adventure, along with all the other Pals, began with training in England before patrolling the Suez Canal in Egypt. The Pals arrived in France in March 1916. On the first day of the Battle of the Somme, Vincent was wounded. He died three days later in a casualty clearing station in the village of Doulans, where he is now buried. A year later, in memoriam notices appeared in the Bradford Telegraph from Vincent's parents, grandparents and relatives. They spoke of Vincent's duty nobly done for a great and noble cause. Vincent was 19. There will be people watching our commemoration this morning, perhaps descendants of pals, for whom this kind of family story will not be unfamiliar. And we should remember that similar stories are cherished by Bradford family whose roots lie in other countries. Stories about ordinary folk doing extraordinary things in a truly global war. Rivercat Ali recently coined a simple but true phrase, all communities in Bradford today will have some connection with the conflict. This message of a shared experience and heritage is being taken by RIF and members of the World War I group to community and faith settings and to schools and colleges across the Bradford district. It's a message which helps bind us as citizens of Bradford. The old mechanics building is long gone, but the Mechanics Institute still exists today and it's the meeting place and resource centre for the Bradford World War I group. In 2016, to mark the 100th anniversary of the end of the Battle of the Somme, Councillor Jeff Reed and Mrs Chris Reed, the Lord Mayor and Lady Mayoress at the time, accompanied members of the World War I group to France. Together with French veterans and friends, we dedicated a new memorial to the Pals at a spot which overlooks the trench lines of the 1st of July 1916. Fundraising for the stone was coordinated by the Telegraph and Argus and donations came from dozens of private individuals and from organisations across the Bradford district and from further afield. It was a hugely poignant occasion. 
The Union flag, which flew above the Mechanics Institute in 1915 as the pals were enlisting, was draped on the stone. The service was conducted in French and English, and outside the dedication began and ended with that most mournful of all sounds, a blast on a 1916 officer's whistle. A member of the French Parliament and the Lord Mayor had the wreath laying, led the wreath laying and were followed by local village mayors, French military units and many more were laid on behalf of all the Bradford contributors. French veterans lowered their standards to the memorial stone as final prayers were shared by our Lord Mayor and the Mayor of the village of Ebutan, Monsieur Jean-Luc Tabary. Without Jean-Luc, this project would never have been achieved. Private Walter Hare was a survivor of the song. When he was in his 90s, Walter wrote a sh short poem with which I shall end. And did we waste our time in days gone by as there we stood knee deep in mud? And was it just a waste of human life to try to find a way of turning evil into good? Oh no, we still must try to find the goal which is the hope of every soul, that wars must cease. Then we shall know that love, not hate, can rule the day. And we can say goodbye to this fair earth. Our time has passed and we can rest in perfect peace at last. Four years ago, we commemorated the centenary of the 1st of July, 1916. I began the service with this reading. We gather today with the jarring images of the waste and ruin of war imprinted on our minds and imaginations to remember all those who were involved in the Battle of the Somme. We honour the memory of those who inhabited that war-shattered landscape, those who endured the mud and the blood, those who showed great courage and loyalty to comrades at arms, those who saw the unspeakable sight of bodies broken, those whose minds were numbed by the noise of bombardment and those whose eyes saw the ugliness of disfigured, weeping and frightened faces. For all who were engaged in combat, those who tended the maimed and injured, the fallen, and for those families who still hold the memories of deceased soldiers, we ask for God's mercy and for ourselves the grace to remember. There are three reasons why events like today must be remembered. First, because their story is our story. It may have happened over a century ago, but today in Bradford there are families who remember their own. The roots of communities go deep into the fabric of a place. Second, because what took place was jaw-droppingly shocking. When you go to the World War I battlefields, there is only one response. Silence. The huge cemeteries and the wounded landscape speak of the unspeakable and they urge us to pursue peace with all our might. Third, as we remember, we pray. There is a bigger story. In this World War I window behind me, we see the soldier in the middle looking up at the wounded and soon to die Saviour. The soldier's face is touched 
by shards of light that stream down because even in the darkest place God is present. It is this conviction that inspires us to believe and work to a higher calling based on generous self-giving. Today, in the trauma of a global pandemic, we too are witnesses of such generosity. If I should die, think only this of me, that there's some corner of a foreign field that is forever England. There shall be in that rich earth a richer dust concealed, a dust whom England bore, shaped, made aware, gave once her flowers to love, her ways to roam, a body of England's breathing English air, washed by the rivers, blessed by sons of home. And think, this heart, all evil shed away, a pulse in the eternal mind, no less, gives somewhere back the thoughts by England given, her sights and sounds, dreams happy as her day, and laughter, learned of friends, and gentleness, in hearts at peace, under an English heaven.
they shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Let us pray. Eternal God, our refuge and our strength, we recall before you this day the Bradford Pals and the terrible devastation wrought upon them in the Battle of the Somme. We recall the close bonds of friendship of colleagues and neighbours together in the trenches and in the slaughter storm of war. We remember their courage and their bravery facing the daily pounding of artillery, the incessant gunfire and shrapnel. May we never forget the devastating loss of life of this battle and its impact upon the communities of our city. May your mercy be upon all who suffer the ravages of war ease our sorrow, heal our memories, strengthen our commitment to work for peace and reconciliation in our day. This we ask in the name of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Bradford Pals, Shehalahule Olaman, Anna Rahamim, Asti Rehem Beseter, Kanafiha Leolamim, Useror Betrahayim. Et nishmatehem Adonai hu nachalatam Ve'anuchu b'shalom Amishkatehem V'nomar, v'nomar Saviturvenium Bargo de Vashadi Mahi, the Oyona Prachodaya Om Burgurvasa, the Saviturvarem Bargo de Vashadi Mahi, the Oyona Prachodaya Om Burgurvasa, the Saviturvarenium Bargo de Vashadi Mahi. Yo yo na prachodayat Om Shanti 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 O God, Thou art the giver of life, the remover of points and sorrows, the bestower of happiness, O creator of the universe, may we receive Thy supreme 
sin destroying light. May thou guide our intellect in the right directions. Om Shanti Shanti Peace Peace. This is to remember our forgotten heroes. No, they are not forgotten. We always remember them as the people who gave their life so that we can live in peace. That's all. Uh, thanks from the Hindu community. Assalamu alaikum. This is a short message on behalf of the Bradford Council for Mosques to remember, recognize and honor the contributions made by the Pals Battalion. Theirs was a unique contribution, a unique sense of comradeship, fighting alongside neighbors, friends and colleagues. They made the ultimate sacrifice. Today, many of the freedoms we enjoy, we owe to these brave men and others like them. May they continue to inspire us and remind us of our responsibilities and duties to our country and community. Thank you. Vaheguru Vadaas Ekke Aankar Shri Vaheguru Ji Ki Fatah Hai Shri Pagati Ji Sahai Var Shri Pagati Ji Ki Paat Shahi Dasmi फिर थम पगाती समर्क है गुरनान कलेते आए फिर अंगत गुरते अमरदास राम दासे हो सहाए अर्जन हार गो बेंदनों सेमरो श्री हर राए श्री हर कृष्ण ते आई है जिस डिठे साब दोख जाए एक बहादर समर है कार नवनिद आवैत आए सब थाई हो सहाए दसम पातशाह तन तन श्री गुरु गोविंद सिंह जी महाराज सब थाई होए सहाय दशा पातशाहियां दी आत्मिक ज्योत जगो जोग टल तन तन श्री गुरु ग्रंथ साहिब महाराज जी दे पावन दर्शन दीदार दा ध्यान तर खालसा जी बोलो जी हे निमाणिया दे मान सतगुरु ने ताणिया दे ताण सतगुरु ने ओटियां दी ओट ने आश्रयों दा आसरा सतगुरु गुरु गरीब निवाज जगो जोग टल धन तन श्री गुरु ग्रंथ साहिब महाराज सतगुरु सच्चे पातशाह जी आप जी दे पावन कोमल चरणा च अरदास बेनती अरजोरी है सतगुरु जी ओ आप जी दे पावन मुख वाकन गगन दमामा बाजियो परयो निशाने काओ खेत जो मांडियो सूरमा अब जूजन को दाओ सूरा सो पहचानी है जो लरे दीन के हेत पुरजा पुरजा कट मरे कबु ना छाडा खेत पुरजा पुरजा कट मरे कबु ना छाडा खेत दे महावाक अनुसार सतगुरु सच्चे पातशाह जीओ पहले विश्व युद्ध दौरान ब्रैडफोर विच वसदे वख वख देश कोमा दे जितने भी जंगी सिपाहियां ने कुर्बानियां दितियां हन ओना शहीदा नु याद करदे होया ब्रैडफोर्ड दिया समूह सिख संगता वलों सच्ची श्रद्धांजलि अते श्रद्धा दे फूल भेंट कीते जांदे हन उना दिया महान कुर्बानियां तो समूह देश अते कोमा नु सेध लेंदियां रहण सतगुरु जी कृपा करन सारे संसार विच सुख शांति अते प्रेम इत्फाक आपसी भाईचारा बख्शना जी सतगुरु जी कृपा करनी सब दी हाजरी अते तिर फुल पेटा परवान करनी सतगुरु जी कृपा करनी इलाही हुक्मनामा बख्श के निहाल करो ते हुक्मनामे ते चरण दी समर्था बख्शो सहाय होवो सही प्यारे मेल जिना मिलया तेरा नाम चित आवे नानक नाम चढ़दी कला तेरे भाणे सर्वात सदा भला वाहे गुरु जी का खालसा वाहे गुरु जी की फतेह बोले सोनहा वाहे गुरु जी का खालसा 
ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ So may God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the Church, the Queen, the Commonwealth, and all people, unity, peace, and concord, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.